Hey, a happy, beautiful, amazing day, and we're going to have an epic podcast today yeah, with yeah. Uh, my new virtual friend, and I suspect we're going to be better friends because we have so much in common, Absolutely. Dr. Fred D. Domenico. Thank you very uh, and much. He, he helped me with the pronunciation of that. I pronounced it like an American, but uh, Dr. Fred, <laughs> you know, let's just start out simple. You know, you're, you're big into mission, you're big into purpose, you're big into self-empowerment. Let's start out with your mission. Well, I want to tell a story first, right? Because uh, you got to know who the person is behind it. So I remember I was raised in an immigrant Italian home. So I grew up in Philadelphia, but I remember playing on the lawn. I was seven years old. And I look back and my grandfather was in his guinea tea, you know, sitting on the porch, grandmother yelling in Italian at him through the window, which she did all day long. It was like, he's just trying to get a rest, you know? And I remember thinking at seven, he was 73. I remember thinking, I wonder what's going through his mind. It's 73. And I thought, you know, when I'm in that chair at 73 on the porch, I want the world to be different. And that's all I knew. It was like this, like the whole universe came into presence in a seven-year-old boy. Like, I want to change the world. And then it's like, okay. And then you go run off and climb a tree, right? But when I found chiropractic, which is another whole story, you know, I knew that I was going to do something that was going to make a difference, but I had no idea what, what it was. And then chiropractic came along. You know, actually, I'm like, uh, I knew I wanted to be in healthcare, but met, I, my mom was an RN, like drugs and surgery. It just didn't align, you know. And when we get into the spiritual aspect, there's Psalm 139, 16 in the Bible says, you knew my days before we were formed. And this is one of the principles of H, honor God within yourself. Like imagine you're in the spirit world before you come into this body and you're watching a movie trailer of your life and your life purpose. And you're like, put me in coach. And then you get in in human form and you're like, whoa, man, my dad's an alcoholic. He's beating the crap out of me. I was sexually abused. I did drugs. You know, la, 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 la. You're like, no, I wouldn't pick this. But your soul doesn't there have compassion for your human experience. But that's why it comes in. You come in for the human experience. And then you find, especially when you go through the healed system, that all those pains and traumas have a great gift. Like if I didn't hate taking drugs, you know, if I, if I didn't go through all the things that I went through in my life, if I didn't have the traumas, and we'll go into a couple of those if you want, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have found chiropractic. You know, we come in as a healer. You know, I remember when I was in high school, all my friends used to come to me with their injury, go, Fred, what's wrong? I'm like, how the heck do I know? I'm like, I'm a sophomore in high school. But I noticed why, and I used to ask myself, why are people keep coming to me? You know, because it's part of your purpose. It's part of who you are. You just didn't find it yet. So anyway, I was an undergraduate at San Diego State, biology major, pre-med, but I didn't really like medicine. And then I got a, I got a, I was praying, God, show me what to do, you know? And then I got a pamphlet from a chiropractic college, LACC. And then I'm like, chiropractors are stupid. They don't know what they're doing. I even I never even been to a chiropractor. You know, I don't know. And then they send me a second pamphlet. And I'm like, chiropractors are dumb. And I throw it away. And then I got a third one. And my belief system is when God is talking to me and I see a sign three times, that's what I'm supposed to do. So I went into chiropractic school. I signed in chiropractic school. I go, I have no idea what chiropractic is. But I know I'm going to do something great, and God's telling me this is what I'm going to do. Well, congratulations on following that voice, and that's, that's the first <laughs> piece of advice for everybody, right? If, if, yeah. if hints are being dropped, one of my favorite uh, quotes is, that's God's way of being anonymous, right? You can yeah. head in a given direction there. But Fred, you know, we, we all haven't found our purpose, right? And I know you're, you're there to help people with that, but we all share at least some kind of trauma in common but what we don't share is seeing the good in it. So you mentioned we could go into a few of those traumas. So what trauma didn't you see the blessing in in the beginning that turned out to be magnificent for your life and so many others? Oh, my God. All of them. Well, I would say uh, the biggest one was my second wife passed away with cancer. And so that was traumatic. But three weeks before she died, uh, you know, she normally weighed 125 pounds. She was down about 85 pounds and she was totally incapacitated. So I had to carry her to the bathtub 
and we were planning her life celebration service. And all of a sudden she started howling, crying. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she said, I don't know if I did what I was supposed to do in this life. And here I am, not only have I already been a chiropractor for years, but now I'm already beginning to coach chiropractors. And so anyway, hearing that, you know, the weight of that was so heavy, I can't put it into words. But then about five seconds, you know, it seemed like 20 years, but about five seconds later, I said, wow, I am living my life purpose. And then a loud voice in my head said, no one in my life will ever say those words to me again. And so I got, uh, after she passed, I got on this, I would say, accelerated spiritual journey. I was already on one, accelerated spiritual journey. And four years later, you know, I was coaching now. I was trying to think of a six-step system, a rehab system for, for chiropractic. And the word healed popped into my mind. And then all of a sudden, I started getting these visions. And I'm like, this is spiritual evolution. And then I started getting all these things, like visions of what it's supposed to be, like like filing through a Rolodex, you know, for us old guys, Rolodexes, you know, where you're going through all these cards, like all these visions are happening like this and going like this. And then I figured I got to write a book. And I started writing it, but I had no idea what I was going to write. So I would tell God, you got to show me what to write. And then either a teacher or a mentor or a book. And then I have the core value that I can't teach what I don't live. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect because we are human, but I have to teach it from my own experience. And so it took me nine years <laughs> for me <laughs> to go through this, to write it. And now, fortunately, you don't need nine years. You can go in two and a half days to, to an experience, right? Or go through a, a three to six month program online. So, so anyway, but I know if I hadn't gone through watching my watching my wife at the time take her last breath, I probably wouldn't have gone on that accelerated journey. I would have kept going on a journey, but not like I'm done. I give up. God, you got to show me. Yeah, there's so many things I want to say about that. One, congratulations yeah. for finding the good. I, I I trust that your your wife was a believer, and we both know that she's in a better place and and always yeah, will be. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the other part of that is one one of my mentors. I'll paraphrase what he teaches, but we all have the same uh, purpose, and that is to show up as our best and getting better self in service to something bigger than ourselves. And, and we may absolutely. actually have many missions, right? So when you were with the patient, that was a mission. When we were with your wife, you're at the mission. Now that you're a practice management coach, chiropractic coach, that's a mission. Just even this podcast has a mission. I'm going to take a little detour because, you know, your spiritual is huge, but you know, you started out physical with chiropractic. You, you're born in the physical. You had all those physical experiences. One of my favorite authors is Robin Sharma. And he talks about the four internal empires of history makers. Uh, and, and we basically have the physical empire, the mental empire, the emotional empire, and the spiritual empire. And I want you to just go on a little tangent on each of those. Which one do you want to start with and why do you choose it as your starting point? Well, I say we would start from, from the bottom, right? Well, to me, mental, mental can be the lowest because that's your humanity. You know, when things happen in our lives and, we, and then we associate emotions, you know, we set a meaning to something and then that determines the emotion. The emotion wires inside us, right? Emotions and conditions get associated, gets in our subconscious mind. And then we're running on these subconscious triggers that we don't even know about. You know, we have all these mental, emotional triggers and that's our humanity. And that is, you know, we come in to experience that. Yet what we're called to do is really to know our divinity and i always say this every spiritual being hello that's all of us genesis 127 we're creating likeness and image and i mean now with quantum physics quantum physics is proving spirituality right so we are energetic beings and the frequency that we vibrate at is according to our consciousness yet yet every spiritual being seeks to know their higher self and that is, a, that is a desire of every person, whether you're conscious 
of it or not. And what I learned when my wife was diagnosed, uh, chemo radiation didn't, didn't work, big surprise. And uh, she wasn't willing to do what would heal her naturally. And one of the greatest lessons I learned, which is the path to peace, is total acceptance. Mm -hmm. And I realized everybody's on their own journey with God. And she would rather pass, even though she had a brand new grandchild, a daughter at 19, a son at 11. Her emotional pain and what she'd gone through in her past was too great. So I would tell her, you just, you know, I came to the conclusion, you want to work it out in the spirit world. You don't want to work it out in this physical human world. I want to work it out in the human world. You want to work it out in the spirit world, and both are perfect for you. Well, that, that might be one of the most enlightening conversations or things I've ever heard anybody say. How long did it take you to come to grips with that? You know, you, you, you have to be evolved to get that conclusion <laughs> anyways, but wow. It was, it was one second. Come on. So here, no, wow. no, I'm, I, no, let me tell you this story. Because God will, and I always say, God will talk to you in a way that you can understand. So I was a kickboxer, martial artist, right? So, so chemo didn't work. We're going through this whole detox. And about halfway through the seven-day detox, her daughter hands her the screen drink. And she's like, I don't want it. I'm done. If this is what I have to do to get healthy, I don't want it. So I'm done. And her daughter was crying. Son was confused. And of course, you know us. Like, this is our whole life purpose, help people heal a disease, right? What a contradiction, you know? What a lesson. You know, the lessons don't necessarily come in ways that we want them. So anyway, I'm sitting in a heated argument, and I have a deep voice. So when I raise my voice, the, the windows rattle. So I'm actually raising my voice. And then all of a sudden, I get punched on the left side of my chin, like someone in front of me hit me with a right hook. I mean, I felt a fist on my chin and my head involuntarily turned. I literally went, boom. And then I stopped talking right in the middle of mid-syllable of raising my voice. Okay, I was probably yelling. Raising my voice, boom. And then I stop. And then a loud voice in my head said, why don't you just accept her the way she is? Like I'm talking to a loud voice said, why don't you just accept her the way she is? Now, here's the irony. I literally said, I never thought of that. Wow. Like we yeah. never think of unconditional love. And so she was looking at me all confused because I stopped yelling mid-syllable. She's looking at me and I just said very calmly, I said, okay. She goes, what do you mean? I said, okay, if that's what you want to do. And I learned total acceptance in that minute when God punched me in the face. <laughs> And that was it. And everything changed and our, everything started to heal. Yeah, I wonder how many times God does punch us or kick us or, or just oh knock us down. And we don't even understand it. it. We just think, oh, I just tripped. Right. I mean, I, if you're actually looking for a deeper meaning, there, were, there was a pattern interrupt going on there for some reason or other. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it's funny because. You know, I, I live by the beach, so I've been walking on the deep sand, you know, and I go swimming through the summer and uh, every day about three o'clock. So anyway, I'm going to God, my left knee's getting sore. And I had an ACL reconstruction, you know, 25 years ago, but I've been strong and great. And so I figured, you know, I'm not going to walk to the beach there. I'm going to drive down there because I tore my ACL. I did a leg workout and then I was running stairs. So I going upstairs, skipping steps. I hit one step. Boom. I felt my whole tibia shift out of place right there goes my ACL. Not all of it, but partial. So I'm like, I think I'll drive to the beach today. I never drive to the beach. So what do I do? I go swimming in the ocean with my only key fob. So wow. I come out of the water. I can't use my car. 800 bucks. I got to get towed back to my house. Now, what is God telling me? You got to stop moving and listen. Let's see. I got a knee injury and now I can't use my car. Okay. <laughs> you know, how many times will that's just bad luck? Or is the universe talking to you saying, look, you, you, you know, you got to stop moving and start getting silent for a minute. I'm going to stop the motion in your life for you and make you so desperate that you have to pray, <laughs> which I pray anyway, but still. 
And people look at that as bad luck. No. Well, yeah. Well, don't we bring it on all by ourselves, right? Maybe if you had taken those few <laughs> extra moments, listened and, and, and gone through. So yeah, we have that in common. So back yeah. to these four internal <laughs> empires, we're talking about mental. Somehow we deviate to spiritual because that's what we are. We're mostly spiritual, uh, mental kind of bridge to emotional, but let's talk about physical, right? We come in this life physical if we look at Maslow's hierarchy, he's going to have physical at the bottom because if, if you're in danger, if you don't have shelter, if you don't have food, if you don't have water, you know, or I, there, there's a sage of wisdom, you know, on a different path, Sadhguru. But he says, you know, if a man's hungry, he's got one problem. He's got his belly's full. He's got a thousand problems. So right. let's, nice. let's, let's go down to that physical rung and, you know, your physical being, you help people physically. How does that tie into everything else? Oh man, God, at what level do we want to talk about this? You know, well, one, let's, let's go to the basic level. Your physical body is a vehicle. You're, you're actually, and you know this from quantum physics, right? We're more space than we are matter. We're more energy than we are matter. And then, and then it comes to, okay, if we're limited to our physical existence, you know, and then you get the principle, okay, is my spirit in my body or is my body in my spirit? Because if I looked at the, and now you can measure the electromagnetic force. If we're electromagnetic beings, we have this whole, if you want to call it aura that we radiate. Is my body in that energy field or is that in my body? Like, like that'll bend your mind if you think about it. So, so, but our physical body is the vehicle and the tool we use to manifest on this physical plane. So if we have a spiritual energetic consciousness walking in that plane that was jesus right divine consciousness walking on a physical plane and that's why you could heal because of that divine energy that who he was he was actually conscious of it right he could lay hands on people but what did he do he only touched people that were ready to receive it how many th hundreds or thousands did he walk by? You know, so so there's another whole level. And I have another spiritual experience. I can get into that story. It depends on how much time you want. Let's but I've been, well, I've been twice in the body of Jesus. So I had, so I asked for, okay, Jesus, when I started writing this book, especially when we get to A, which is forgiveness. Before I started that book, I prayed very intently. And I said, I already know how man must have sinned. God, I want to know how you look at sin. And like in the next nanosecond, I was out of my body and I was in Christ's body on the cross. And I was looking down, I was about 15 feet in the air. And I was looking down, there was a Roman soldier to my right and he was mocking me. You know, and, and of course I could feel his energy and what could I feel? I could feel his fear, two reasons, one, what if I'm crucifying the son of God? That, that could be a problem for me. And two, what if I am who he really says I am? Then I'm really more powerful than I can even believe I understand. And then I saw, you know, Mary Magdalene's mother and Mary and the apostle. And then about 15 feet back was a crowd that faded back. So when he said, I could feel and hear everything and feel what he was thinking. When he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He wasn't asking God to forgive because God doesn't see your sin. You wouldn't see sin of a two-year-old running around if they broke something. You would say, we'll try and keep that out of their reach, right? <laughs> Which really like how God looks at us. So he doesn't see your sin. Forgiveness is for man. Because the emotions that we don't forgive, that we store in our body, become the barrier and the noise in our mind. And the energy that we store in our body that creates disease, that doesn't lead a clear path, like we think we can't find God, but we can't not ever be connected, right? The temp God is in the temple, the temple is inside, you can never not be connected. The question is, but you can lose consciousness, but that's within yourself. And so I realized there that he was teaching because what he was teaching was in spite of the fact that you're torturing and killing me, I'm still showing divine love. And that was his message. 
That's all it is. It's one thing. Overwhelmingly beautiful. Uh, and, and so that's a, that's a very deep experience and, and powerful on every single level. What about people that maybe don't believe or don't even understand spirituality? What's the first step for them? Oh, man. First step is, well, do you like how you're living your life now? How's your belief systems working for you? Because if beliefs are just perspectives, and this is how I start the healed experience. You know, a uh, quote from, uh, oh, God, I just blanked out his name. Uh, oh, Jim Quick, you know, who teaches memory and all this Brain stuff. Man, yeah. Yeah, he says we live... We, we live what we believe. So if all your belief systems that you've acquired have gotten you to where you are today, how are they working for you? And can two people see the same thing, have a completely different impression and have different belief systems? You see kids that are raised in the same family. You know, one may be a CEO or successful entrepreneur. Another one is in repetitive rehab. Why is that? You know, so if belief systems are only a perspective and you don't and you're not happy with where you are, are you willing to look at what belief systems got you to where you are? And if you want to be somewhere different, would you be willing to hear more empowering beliefs that you could possibly adopt? We could also call that philosophy, right? One of my mentors like to call belief systems BS for the majority of people. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, if we go with our, our personal life philosophy, the love of wisdom, uh, and you know, listen to some of your podcasts, read some of what you wrote. If we had one prayer, it'd be for wisdom. So, tell me about that. You know, how how do we get connected to the not just divine wisdom? Well, I guess it's all divine. Sorry. So let, let's just go. How do we get connected to wisdom? Well, I always say knowledge becomes wisdom through experience. So it's like when you have an experience, you know, what, what gift, if you looked for the gift, and one of the things we go through in E, after we go through exercise, loving yourself and honor God within yourself, there's a powerful question that, at least if you believe there's some higher power, whether you call it God, universe, mother nature, whatever, if you believe there's a divine, there is a consciousness out there, then, then the most powerful question in life is, how would God see this? How could I see this condition from the highest, most loving state? And then all of a sudden you realize, I don't really have a problem. And then you find out, you know, it's like when you're in the Indy 500 and there's a crash in front of you, uh, you know, you, you, you know the strategy. The crash is drive straight at it because they're like billiard boys. If they crash, the last place they're going to be is stuck right here. They're going to go like this. Like if you try and avoid it, they go like that. And you, you know, you're going to run it. You, that, you have a higher probability of getting in an accident than if you go straight at it, because that's going to be the only guaranteed space. So then a strategy in life, when you ask that question, your strategy becomes do nothing. Get in a state of love. Because when you don't doubt and you believe in your heart, you can cast them out into the sea with a word, right? Well, what's that mean? What's faith in your heart? Looking at it through loving eyes. And then you can take the highest action. That's wisdom. I would agree. Now the next yeah. question is how, how do we achieve that level of inner peace, that level of consciousness to make that a daily practice? Uh, you know, I, I'm imagining that mastery is moment to moment, not a lifetime thing, at least not on this planet, right? We've, we've got we've to recenter ourselves, sometimes often. Every day. And sometimes multiple times a day, right? That's why I go swimming in the beach. That's my reset in the afternoon before I go into the evening after the day. You know, it's, I would say it's daily rituals. You have to habituate it. And I mean, day, you know, I wake up, I do my spiritual rituals. I read from four sources every day. You know, I visualize what I want to do in my life. You know, I open myself up to God's plan. Like I say, in the summer, I walk on the beach. I go swimming in the ocean. I take my dog for a walk. You know, I happen to live a couple blocks from the ocean. So with intention and um, it's your rituals, man, because you are human. So if you look at yourself like a hologram, you know those things we used to get way back when in our Cracker Jacks box? 
Sure. Right. Hey, here's one view of yourself. Here's another view of yourself. When you have the power and the ability, because we all have it, it's just in your mind where we started, how you can change that back and forth. And then you have the tools. And that's what the yield system is about. It's not just an experience. There's tools. You know, when A, accepting forgiveness for yourself and others. Forgiveness isn't an act. It's a lifestyle. Loving yourself and others in E, that's not an act. That's a lifestyle. But you can't do that until you understand I'm a child of God. I'm an infinite being. I carry the intelligence of the whole universe. You may think, well, I don't feel that way in my mind. Well, you're not going to get it in a degree from college. That comes in your heart. So I always say intellect is in your head. Intelligence is in your heart. Well, I like that a lot. And then if we start looking at emotional intelligence, that's clearly in your heart, right? And, and they've written books on it. It's, uh, you know, prize winning research, but 85% of all human effectiveness, they're going to relate to emotional intelligence rather than mental or intellectual intelligence. Absolutely. Uh, and then I, 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 we got to throw spiritual intelligence over the top of that. I, I guess that would override everything. Absolutely. That's the foundation, right? So really, you know, my, my journey started when, and that's when I had these autobody response, like, okay, I've been through enough pain. Um, you know, there were two verses in the Bible that didn't make sense to me of everything in between these two verses. And it starts with Genesis 127. We are, we're creating likeness and image of God. So I never understood if we're creating likeness and image of God, then why are we born sinners? That doesn't make sense to me. And then they say, well, you could never be like Jesus. He's perfect. You'll never be that way. But he also said, it says, if you believe in me and my interpretation after these two out-of-body experiences were more, if you believe like me, then you can do all these things and greater. Well, if we can do all these things and greater and believe in you, how about we believe like you? Because if we believe like you, we're probably going to believe in you. But what's in you mean? I want to know. I want, and, and I got this from, I want to know who you are from your perspective, not from man's. And when I really became heart-centered on that, because if I can really do this, what's it going to take? I have to be able to see that level. Of, I have to understand that level of consciousness. So if I could tell one more Please. fairly quick story. Yeah. So I take people through emotional breakthroughs, right? And spiritual breakthroughs. So I was scheduled to do a call with a client of mine. I was sitting on the couch in my living room. And then my buddy called and he said, I just found out my wife is having an affair. He was going to a very traditional Christian church. And uh, she's moving out and living with her, but we're going to live with her boyfriend. And so he went to his pastor and said, I want to get a divorce. Here's what happened. He said, there's no divorce in our church. If you get divorced, you will be excommunicated from our church. So he was very distraught. He told me this. And I'm like, buddy, you got to get out of there. But I got to get on this call. It's going to be about an hour. Let me call you after. So when I'm taking people through these breakthroughs, I go in these meditative straight because I state because I get them in their subconscious mind so they can pull out these triggers from childhood and we can clear them. And so I was sitting there praying and all of a sudden Jesus appeared in front of me, standing in front of me on the couch. He had this tan robe on with a hood. I could see like a goatee, but his eyes were kind of covered. And, and communication in the spirit world is, you know, it's not verbal and out loud, right? It's telepathic. And so he said, step into my body. And he turned his back toward me. And I got up on the, off the couch and I stepped into his body where I was wearing that rope. And all of a sudden, man, my energy shot up through the roof. My God, I was like on the Apollo, whatever. Faster than that, like it was, <laughs> I'll go back to the 70s. It was like the most intense bong hit you ever, you ever took in your life. But it was better than that. It didn't have everything. I was like, Whew. And it was going up and up and up and up and up. And I was getting these full body rushes and all this energy up and up and up and up. And then it stopped. And I was hovering at a divine Christ consciousness. 
And then my friend, who I just got off the phone with, appeared in front of me, kneeling with his hands behind his back and his head down. And I reached my arm now, and now I'm standing in front of my fireplace. I saw the tan robe, and I said, stop judging yourself. And I touched his shoulder, and this bolt of energy went out of my hand into his body, and then he disappeared. And now I'm standing in front of my fireplace. And then Jesus said, just stay here, like memorize this. So I just stood there memorizing how that felt and how I felt was I could have a thought. I felt like on a quantum level, all the atoms of the universe were, were in front of me like a golden retriever waiting, you know, thrilled that you're going to throw the tennis ball. And all I had to do was give a command, woof, and they were going to go out and change the physical world. I thought, anybody's in front of me, they're healed. A word, a touch, a thought. And then I, I thought, I don't even have to say anything. I could think it, and whatever disease they have is going to be gone. And then I sat there for what seemed like a minute, but it was probably no time. The next second, I'm back on the couch. I never took a step to get to the fireplace. I never took a step to get back on the couch. And here's my, I come back into my humanity and I said, how am I ever going to get there again? And then the next thought was, that's the problem. I doubted. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Great conclusion there. <laughs> yeah. Like those thoughts were one after another. Like, look, man, I just showed you. And so now when I meditate, I put myself in that state. Whether or not I could get quite that high, I do my best. But I felt it and I experienced it to the point where that's what I'm supposed to. I had to experience it to understand it. And then I can teach it. Who's your teaching available to? Is it anybody now? Oh, not just yeah. well, the general public. Yeah. No, I've never even introduced it to chiropractic the only people that i've taken through it are, are my elite chiropractic clients but i'm about to launch it out in the general public in, in the next 60 days but there is an online system it's called the healed system.com you can go to that website the healed system.com you know there's 36 videos a workbook there's all these things tools there and the people that have gone through that even without me coaching it through it have had major breakthroughs in their life. In fact, many of the elite people, the elite chiropractic coaches, excuse me, chiropractors, they've grown their business even before they implement all the systems because their consciousness goes up. They clear all out that negative stuff. They become more clear on who they are and their ability to connect with other people is greatly enhanced. Everything changes in their life. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The sages of wisdom say that, you know, life is really 80% of who you are and 20% of what you do. Would you switch yeah. that a little bit? Would you make it 99.9% .9 yeah. who you are? Nine, nine, or nine, or nine, maybe nine, more nine. than that, right? So yeah, yeah that, that energetic component, which, you know, they say we could take all of humanity and put it in, in, a, in a single dice. That's, that's yeah. what, our, what our atoms are or, or our, our mass is, but yet our energy is all that empty space. So we're Absolutely. at that magic roundup time for podcasts. We're right at that magic 33 minutes. So uh, what wrap-up message do you have for, for anybody who sees this? We're going to encourage everybody to get to Healed. We're going to put that uh, certainly in the footnotes of the podcast. Uh, we'll, we'll get snippets from this and share it around the world. The world needs to know. But what's, what's your wrap-up message for this today? You know, I would say everybody only has one problem in life. You only have one problem. Now, when it becomes simple then it's easier. Although the process may be different, but if you only focus on one thing, and that is your only problem is your level of consciousness. So there's two things real quick. It's like an eagle flying at 10 feet. Number one, your problem solving capability from your view is very limited. Number two, you got crows riding on your back. That's a metaphor for all the problems you have, right? Your emotional backpack. But an eagle at a thousand feet, there's no crows. You can see the horizon. Your perspective on yourself and your life changes. Your problem-solving capability is at a higher level. I did an interview with Neil Donald Walsh on a podcast, uh, Your More Powerful Podcast, 
I said, Neil, man, you're affecting people, millions around the world, blah, 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 filling your purpose, la, la, la. And he goes, no, 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 stop. He cut me off. And he goes, I only have one purpose. And that is to understand who God created me to be. And the more I do that, he said, I don't know if I'll do it in this lifetime, but the more I do that, the more people I help. And I'm like, oh my God, man. <laughs> so I only have to focus on one thing because all these things I want to do is too overwhelming. I just got to focus on one thing. Like that is simple. Pure wisdom. Well, I'm going to wrap up with these words. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, absolutely knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful. So if it's the morning, good day and God bless. If it's the end of the day, good night and God bless.